make a video on um, iterative methods in MATLAB using both the Gauss, Seidel, and the um, Jacobi methods. So I've seen a lot of videos, all of them very, very different ways of programming it. And I was looking for the easiest way to get this done and to understand what I'm doing. So I've put everything on one page. I'm going to explain the methods and then I've got a single program that can do both of these. So it's very easy, very straightforward. So just bear with me. First of all, we've got our, our uh, three equations and we're looking for a, an answer for that. So the easiest way to do that is put it in matrix form, where A is our co coefficient matrix, and uh, obviously B is um, the values that we get on this side. And then there's a built-in Gaussian method that will give us the answer, which is very straightforward. So there we've got our matrix. It's a diagonally dominant matrix, which we want with the iterative methods. And um, with the built-in Gaussian method, obviously, there's our results. But sometimes they want us to use the iterative methods, especially with sparse, large matrices. And uh, also, you want them to be diagonally dominant. I'm not going to discuss the program to, to evaluate that, although that's not very difficult. So the first one I'm going to do is the Gauss-Seidel. Um, this I've programmed the equations in a way just to see how it actually works. And then I've got a program at the end that will do it automatically. And by just remembering this one single line, you will probably be able, or you can do both the uh, Jacobi and the Gauss-Seidel uh, methods. So let me first have a look at the Gauss-Seidel. You start off with any arbitrary value, usually zeros, as the result that we are looking for. Then you're going to iterate through them. And what's easy with gauss seidel is for the first one, x2 and 3 will be 0, as we see there. But then you get a new value for x1. When you go to the second equation, you use that x1 that you've already gotten to replace the 0. And by the time you get to the third equation, you've already got a new x1 and x2 by the time you go back to the first equation. So you're going to iterate through that eight times. And um, the only reason I'm putting this x vec in is to put a vector so you can see with each iteration what is the specific values. So if I go up, this is the built-in Gaussian method, which should get uh, 1, minus 1, and 2. So with a gauss del, we start off with zeros. Then the first one, as you see on top here, should be 0.85 because x2 and x3, we start off with 0. So you end up with 17 divided by 3 is 0.85. But the second one isn't point, minus 1.3 because we're already using the 0.85 when we go to the second equation. And you can see this converges to the value that we are looking for, 1, minus 1, and 2. But it keeps going because I've specified that it should go through the iterations um, well, seven times. The reason I've started at 2 is so that I can keep the zeros in the first column, just so that we can see from 0 how it converges to the value with what that we are actually looking for. Now, the difference in the Jacobi method is that you keep the first value for all three equations, get the new values, and then you iterate through that again. So the first iteration for the Jacobi should be exactly what we see on top. So all of these will be 0, so you're left with 17 divided by 20, 13 divided by minus 10, and 18 divided by 10. And that should be our first values for the Jacobi method which is exactly what we're seeing. And the other thing is because it's not a dynamic change in values, you can see it takes a few more iterations to get to where we want to be. So for the Gauss-Seidel, it would be one, two, three, four iterations in this case, where here it will be one, two, three, four, five, six iterations. It converges to our solution or our values. Okay, so that is if you do it by hand. 
of course we don't want to do it by hand and we want a program that does everything for us and that is where the problem comes in I've seen a lot of solutions this looks like a big program it's very very straightforward and you can almost just do both solutions by looking at this one single line and we'll get to that just now so for the gauss Seidel or Jacobi, obviously we start off with an initial value that I will call x old. Then I'm going to make a matrix where we've got A, it's going to be AT, and we need the size of the matrix. And then the only thing this does is for the AT matrix, we remove all the diagonal entries. And the reason for that, if you look up here, for the first equation, the first entry 1 1 isn't on the right hand side for the second equation the middle entry 2 2 isn't on this side and we will use that in our equation so this simply removes all the diagonal entries and, and makes it zero while keeping the rest of the matrix the same and then we just say x new is x old, we're going to use that in the equations. I'm creating a vector to keep track of the changes like we did before. K max is just the maximum amount of iterations so that if the matrix or the, the, the um, iterative method doesn't converge, that it doesn't keep going forever. So that you can make this 50 or 100, that will be the maximum amount of iterations. But since we know it converges within maybe six or seven iterations, I'll just put this on 20. The tolerance will be the error tolerance. So if it, it the error, the difference between the one and the next value in the iterations are less than 10 to the minus 5, we will stop doing the iterations. We will stop the loop. The count I will just keep count of and I'll use this also to fill up my vector with a, uh, columns with the new values and the error I just put in an arbitrary one so that we can get going um, but that will obviously change with each iteration as we get closer and closer to our answer now here's the important part of the loop we're gonna say while the error is larger than the tolerance Uh, and as long as the count is below the k-max. So once we get to a very small error, we specify 10 to the minus 5, it will stop the while loop. Or if it doesn't converge, the error doesn't get smaller, but we get to our maximum iterations of 20, the loop will end. Now this is basically our Gauss-Seidel. So the x new, and it's going to iterate depending on the size of the matrix in this case three times so what this means is for the first one we're going to use the first b value minus x new times the remainder so we've removed x1 from the matrix and we've only got x2 and 3 there divided by a kk which is the first one that we actually removed here so just looking at here, so this is exactly what we've got up here. So we've got an empty matrix. We've got the B minus 0, X1. It's not here. We've got X2, we've got X3, but we divide by the X1 value, which is the 20, if that makes any sense. And then we save the value in the vector so we can keep track of how it changes with time. We increase the count. We work out the error, which we work out the relative error, uh, error, which is the absolute value of x new minus x old divided by x new. And then we just simply change the x old to the new for the next iteration. Okay, so if I run this, then we've got our matrix. Once again, it's diagonally dominant, which is what we want. Um, with the built-in Gaussian method, we've got our answer already. With the Gauss-Seidel Gauss method that we've done by hand, this one, you can see how it changes until it converges. The Jacobi method converges to the same value. And now the Gauss-Seidel, obviously the error got smaller, 
and within five iterations we've got our solution okay now the question is how do we change this to the Jacobi method and that is the best part of this program and the reason I'm making this video is if you change this to X old and you run it you can compare these two you've got your Jacobi method so it's exactly the same program but you can see the iterations it converges a little bit later and it doesn't go along with the gauss sadel so one single variable change in this actually gets you to the Jacobi method and changing this back to x new we're back to the gauss sadel within five iterations Okay.